okay yeah, yeah. busy but restful my weekend was quite busy really because yes I, what were you up to i lost two relatives oh and dear he, over the weekend we there was a funeral oh and, you, and you didn't tell me anything about it so i can come in oh, oh it's never too late oh, mutala, no, no, it's never don't too do late. that ah you've been in any power what's that oh no no, no, no the funeral itself is coming up in the village when in the in the western region when so the date is here to be fixed ah so this one week yeah, there's not one week so it was a family meeting no the two bodies were buried on saturday okay you know they stayed in two different places and okay. the place where they are well known mm -hmm. is the village far away in the western region ah so uh -huh. this was so, to bury them here yes and then the if not be done in the, okay yes. so okay, we performed the burial ceremony here over the weekend mm -hmm. so the real barrier i'll invite you no problem. and the whole house okay yes <laughs> yes you no problem so you have you have you have found a way to escape no escape my haranguing hands uh, of demanding that you do better but it's fine okay. anyway so um today is monday yes parliament is not sitting but the court, they are full session. Of course, you lie. Even Talk when they are on vacation, they still have how to find a way for some of the court to sit. Anything yeah. is possible. So there's no break any day. Any no, day. No, no problem. <laughs> so today, the on the Kaswa ritual murder. Yes. What's become of it and what's yeah. happening in court today? So, Francis, it is one of the cases that I always say that when I talk about it, the emotions are always very high because mm. when you, you see through the trial, you see through the times when parties are giving evidence, mm -hmm. testifying and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. It's really, really very tough to, 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 to sit through a case like that. But of course, the nature of our work is such that you have to go there and be professional enough and come and tell the story as it is. Mm -hmm. It is the case that virtually every time that it comes out, you see people in tears mm -hmm. in, in, in open court, whether they are directly connected or people who are there to listen to what is happening. Yes. There are tears all over. And this is the case that um, the father and mother and sister of one of the accused persons, uh, the 15-year-old ju uh, juvenile, were in court to testify against him. And so you understand the setting, you understand the situation we are talking about. And this is the case that two uh, teenagers, one is 15 years at the time the incident happened in 2021, and the other one is also uh, 18 years, so a juvenile and a young offender. Today, Justice Lydia Osema is expected to sum up the trial. And summing up the trial means that the court is going to summarize the whole trial, mm -hmm. the witnesses that were called, what the jurors are supposed to look at, what they are not supposed to look at. And in fact, whatever the court will say is not binding on them. The reason that they are in court, they are, they, they, the jurors, and in some way, they call them uh, judges of facts. So they listen to whatever has happened, and at the end of the day, they return their verdict. Today, the court, this is what is going to happen. The defense lawyers and prosecution will offer their final addresses to the jurors. Then the court will proceed to sum up the trial. Mm -hmm. Then after the summing up, the jurors or the jury will retire to chambers. They have their office, and they're going to consider their decision and come out and tell us whether the accused persons mm -hmm. are guilty or not guilty. However, in recent time, for the past one month, okay. the month and few days, so 16 uh, May, mm -hmm. and today's day 24, right? Yes. Okay, 16 plus 4 plus 4. Mm -hmm. So fifth, uh, a month and a week yeah. plus one day, mm -hmm. if you want to put it in, to be in exact. specific terms. Yes. Yeah. So they are on strike. The idea being on strike means that it is highly possible that this case today will not would be adjourned. So that is the situation. And I've had interaction with the family of the family members, and they are really, really uh, not happy about uh, this situation at all. The last time it was the same situation that the court was uh, there. In fact, it was deferred to today at the last court sitting because <coughs> of the absence of the jurors. Mm -hmm. And today that the court had fixed it, it is also possible, it's looking likely that the jurors are still not back, and so this case will be affected. It is not confirmed, though, until up until the time that the case is called, they will know that the jurors are still not back mm -hmm. or they are back. But what I do know as of yesterday night is that the jurors, they are still at home. They said their demands have not been met. Ten months 
and the eleventh month has come, their allowances have not been paid. So this very case which we ex expected or we are hoping that it will come to an end today, it is looking fifty fifty. My dear Jen, yes. I see. I see. Okay. Um that's for the Kaswa ritual Absolutely. made case. Beige Bank. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> Line of 61. We yeah, are now number yes, what? Uh, number 15. Okay. Yes. We are expecting number 15 today. So, the before Justice Ifia Sewa Asari Boki, a Justice of the Court of Appeal who is sitting with additional responsibility as a High Court judge. So, there are some of the um, Court of Appeal judges, Supreme Court judges, whom the court, uh, CJ, will look at the nature of the case and will decide that probably I need an experienced hand mm -hmm. to deal with this situation. So the, uh, the, the CJ will, will assign the case to uh, one particular judge. Mm -hmm. But some of the judges, who they, they, for instance, uh, Justice Efia Sewa Saribuchi, she started handling this case before her elevation to the Court of Appeal, so she's still handling it and mm -hmm. all that. There are a couple of justices, uh, a, a case like the Ernest Thompson one, mm -hmm. Justice Henry Anthony Kofi was a justice of the Court of Appeal when uh, he was dealing with the matter. Now he's been elevated to the Supreme Court. Justice Samuel Etiedu, who is handling the Sam, uh, Samuel of Uswan Pofo's case, mm -hmm. was also elevated to the uh, Supreme Court when he was dealing with the matter as a Court of Appeal judge. So there have mm -hmm. been a lot of cases that have been dealt with by Court of Appeal, then Namo and then Colin Zauda, mm -hmm. Justice of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ernest uh, Ousu Dapa. So there are a lot of Court of Appeal judges who are dealing with uh, high court cases, depending on uh, when the situation is called and when the need arises. So today, uh, Michael Nineke will be calling the 15th witness before Justice Efia Sewa Sarbuti and his lawyer uh, is Tadio Sorry. So we expect the witness to come to court and testify. Then we'll know what more will become of the remaining uh, witnesses that he has in indicated that he'll be called, whether mm -hmm. he will end it here or whether he will call more. And you remember that he himself has also filed a witness statement to testify. So mm -hmm. he want all the witnesses to come and after he will, he will sum it up. But we will know more after today's court sitting. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, wait. You said Teresora is counsel for who? Um, Michael Nineku. He's also counsel for Japa? Yes. Okay. And he's also counsel for uh, Alaji Collins out there. I see. I see. He's a, he's a very tough man. Yeah. He's a tough lawyer. Busy hey, lawyer. Remember that uh, Mr. Japa was telling us at one point in time that when uh, the attorney general found out that uh, it was Mr. Um, Tado Sorry, mm -hmm. who he has uh, hired as counsel, he said, why have you brought this hot-headed man to come and destroy my keys for me? And I said, yes, I know he's a, he's a, he's a very uh, good lawyer. That's why I've hired him to pay him big money to come <laughs> and represent me. So Tado Sorry is a big lawyer. So mm. the big uh, cases, all the clients were looking forward to to bring him on board. So that's how come you see him in some of these big, 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 big cases. And though he's also counsel for the speaker of parliament. Mm. Remember the LGBTQ, yes. Ah. He represents the, the speaker of parliament. parliament. So Thadio Sorry. Yes, Thadio Sorry. Okay. Yes. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Wherever you are. Very, very busy man. Yes. Uh, 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 How many years of the bar do you know? Uh, I'll find out. I don't, but, know, I don't know. But, but he's senior. senior. Yes. He's yes, senior. senior. I'm sure he's done about As 20. One of the, one of the uh, court sitting, mm -hmm. notice that the day Justice Efia Sewa Saribuchi was having issues with Sami Jemfi. Yeah. And the court indicated that Sami Jemfi is a senior member of the bar. Mm -hmm. And Sami said, no, he's not senior. Mm -hmm. And he said, how old are you at the bar? And he said, six years. Yeah. And that your story says, to be a senior, you have to be 10 years and above. Yeah. Yes. So it means he is senior. For now, we know that I'm sure. Senior. I'm sure he's close to 20 years at the bar. Most, most, I suspect most, so. Possibly, yes, I suspect possibly. so. Yeah, anyway, he's, he's, he's had a lot of experience, and I won't be surprised that he's been more than 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what it's clear is that to be a senior, it should be more than 10 years. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> 10 years, then you're senior. Yeah, yeah, senior. So yeah. until then, you are counsel. Uh, yes, counsel. Uh, junior counsel. Ju oh, uh, maybe. So they, they had the junior, and then uh, how do you put it? Intermediate. Uh, let's leave it. <laughs> 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 okay, the Coco Board case. Yes. Mm, last week, there was talk about what? The, is it Court of Appeal or Supreme Court decision? Yeah, the Supreme Court. Okay, yes. so where does this leave the case now? Yeah, so we told you about the fact that at the last uh, Supreme Court case, case sitting, what they were challenging was the order from the, uh, of the Court of Appeal that the trial should not uh, start afresh, and so they should adopt mm -hmm. Justice Clement Honyanuga's proceedings, which have been, uh, long been adopted. They had a lot of issues, appeal and all that. So the trial is ongoing as has been directed by the Court of Appeal. So it means they have adopted 
Justice uh, Clement Hunyanuga retired uh, proceedings mm -hmm. and it's ongoing. They were hoping that the Supreme Court would overturn that, but that did not happen. The Supreme Court re uh, reaffirmed the Court of Appeals decision, so the trial de novo won't happen. So they are continuing. So today we are expecting a businessman, Said Wagungu, mm -hmm. and his company, Agricult Ghana. So it's Dr. Semikono Puni, the first accused, Said Wagungu, the second accused, mm -hmm. and Agricult. Even though it's not a human being, it is a third accused. Mm -hmm. And it is being represented by Said Wagungo. So they are calling their witnesses together. So today we expect a sixth uh, uh, defense witness for Said Wagungo and Agricole to come. And I understand that it's somebody who worked with the Ghana Standard Authority who will be coming to court to testify. So that's what we expect. And he'll be giving uh, the court his or her evidence in chief mm -hmm. based on what he or she knows about this case. And after that, they, they will be subjected to cross-examination and then we we'll move on from there. So what is clear today is that uh, Said Wagungo, businessman mm -hmm. and Agricult Ghana Limited, will be calling their safe defense witness. And this, this is the indication that they'll be calling some more witnesses before Justice Abu Ajitando. I see. All right. Does this case that came up this morning on the in the papers relative to the ICC dismissing Michelletti's case against Ghana? I'd like to read through the details, right. and then based on what you know from the court, you can Absolutely. you can share with us. So the International Chamber of Co uh, Commerce has dismissed an international arbitration instituted by Michelletti Company Limited against the government of Ghana in May 2023, claiming damage of four hundred thousand dollars. The company <clears throat> had also claimed accrued interest at the current Bank of Ghana Forex rate plus 3% points starting from February 2009 to date of final payment. The international arbitration was instituted by against the backdrop of what the claimant alleged to be a breach of contract relating to the rehabilitation of the Ohinijan Sports Stadium in Accra. The ICC tribunal, comprising Sadaf Habib, President, Shadrach Ahin, and Just Justin Amenuvo, members, in this partial award decided it had jurisdiction to hear the matter, but dismissed the claims because the arbitration proceedings were filed outside the Limitations Act of Ghana. Uh, please, quick education. So the International Chamber of Commerce, where is it? I'm not too sure where it, it, it is. It is, okay, uh, that's fine. But once it has to do with um, an arbitration, we have the, 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 the arbitration uh, proper mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the Hague. That's okay. the Netherlands. Okay, yeah, so okay. You, there are so many of these cases that I noticed that uh, the day that the president went to parliament and mm -hmm. he said that the uh, attorney general has saved Ghana mm -hmm. uh, 10 trillion and yeah. all that. These are some of the cases that the attorney general Referencing. has referenced and all that. Okay. So, in fact, Cassius Mining is also one company that is also seeking some uh, judgment debt mm -hmm. by way of arbitration mm -hmm. at the International Court of Arbitration and all that. So, there are so many of them. Quite interesting. Most of the cases that go there end up coming back okay. because they, they will look one way or the other. They didn't meet the requirement or they didn't make their... That's what should require. Absolutely. Okay. And they, and sometimes they bounce them back to come and uh, face the local arbitration mm -hmm. and they'll have the whole issue resolved. So okay. I'm sure so on this there. one, mm -hmm. the, apparently there was a, <clears throat> a decision taken by government in 2006 to rehabilitate two sports facilities, a number uh, of studios. Ahinejan. Ahinejan of the AFCON, yes. So Ahinejan and then Babayara and then Elwak. Absolutely. Now, post the arrangement, it came up that government had noted that the contract had not received approval from cabinet okay. and so it, there was a, a bit of a, a back and a forth back and now the ag representing the government of ghana denied liability for any indebtedness and raised a preliminary legal objection in accordance with, uh, with article 5 1 of the icc rules of arbitration assistant state attorney Anne marie ayanru contended that the claimant had not exhausted the dispute resolution mechanisms procedure applicable under the fidic general conditions of contract which require the party to submit any dispute arising to a dispute adjudication board at first instance. And therefore, the tribunal had no jurisdiction to determine the claim by Micheletti. Further, Ghana argued that even if the tribunal were to find that it had jurisdiction, the claimant's claim having been filed more than 14 years after the course of action arose was statute barred mm. under Ghanaian law, which is the substantive law of the agreement. The AG's office argued that the right of the claimant to initiate any dispute resolution mechanism for a matter bordering on breach of contract could only be enforced within a six-year period after accrual of the course of action which occurred on 19th May 2009. The tribunal agreed 
to a bifurcation of issues, which allowed a, a determination of the preliminary objection and the claim of the action being statute barred first. Mm. Michelet, through his lawyers, had argued that it had written to the respondents and proposed Gami and Gami to settle the dispute within 28 days. But the respondent failed to respond to the notice, hence waived its right to an amicable settlement. This failure by the respondent, it said, gave the claimants the right to file an international arbitration. The claimants further relied on Section 25 of the EDR Act 2010, Act 798 of Ghana and argued that the respondent did not raise any concern on the dispute resolution mechanism in response to the claimant's letter of March 20 last year, and that the respondent acknowledged receipt of the letter. On the issue of claim being time barred, the claimants aver that Section 4 of the Limitation Act 1972 NRCD 54 of Ghana does not apply because of subclause 14.8 GC of the agreement. It also argued that under Kenyan Arbitration Act, which was the seat of arbitration, uh -huh, so now we found it. Yes. The claimant's claim is not time barred. So that was the argument put forward by, yes. by Mitchell Letty. The, the tribunal agreed with the Attorney General in the matter, right? Saying that on the objection raised against jurisdiction, they held that they had jurisdiction to hear the matter because okay. the claimant had taken steps to notify the respondent of his intention to refer the dispute to a, to a dispute adjudication board before commencing arbitration proceedings. But such steps were ignored by the respondent. The tribunal, however, agreed with the government of Ghana that the action was statute barred under Ghana under Ghanaian law, having been instituted way beyond 2015. That is, that is more than six years allowed by Ghana's limitation out act. Out of time. Yes, so out moment, of time. Situations like that sometimes in our, in our Ghanaian setting here, sometimes you go to court. So that is why you see people come to court mm -hmm. to come and seek leave mm -hmm. to be able to file certain processes because they, they are out of time. Mm -hmm. Some way, some way allowed. And sometimes some of the cases, do, your case, even though no matter how good it will be, once yeah. you are out of time, you are out of time. So for instance... So time is always of the essence. It's, a, it's of essence. When there's a criminal case and a judgment is passed against mm -hmm. you and you are convicted, you have um, up to three months to be able to file your appeal. If you sit down and three months is over, it's very difficult for you to, to, to go back. So ev everything that is it's in court has time. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, you, if you don't go with the time, mm -hmm. you realize that you may have a case, but it, might, it may likely go against you because you didn't follow the rules. So some people will also have a way of doing it. Mm -hmm. They will delay you some delay tactics and all that. If you don't identify those potholes, yes. you also be on your toes before you realize your case is thrown out, even though you have a letter case. So uh, clearly, you could see that uh, what you've just read indicate mm -hmm. that yes, they, they agree with, with, with the applicant one way or the other, but they noticed that it was out of time, and so there's nothing that they can do. About it. Yes. I see. All right. Um, you've already told us what's, what's coming up today. Yes. But there's a case that everybody has an interest in. Mm -hmm. The ambulance case. The ambulance case. Um, what are we to expect... I know this this will have been said tomorrow morning, but I'm <laughs> I'm itching. Um what what should we expect tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow, in some brief. Then tomorrow, tomorrow we can tomorrow we can the break down. Is not even sitting tomorrow. Oh. Yes. What's going so on? We have to wait. <laughs> tomorrow the case is not uh, court, the court is not sitting about by your party. On the, the last, matter. Yes, on the matter. At the last court sitting, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, prosecution indicated to the court that the team will be somewhere, will not be available. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week, mm -hmm. uh, especially for um, the last sitting was on Thursday. They will not be available this week, Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So the case will come on rather on Thursday. I see. And Thursday, 27th of June, prosecution will do their last but one cross examination of Mr. Jakba. Then the following Tuesday, mm -hmm. then there will, there will be the concluding part of, of the cross examination. Concluding so by who? By the prosecution. You know, the prosecution is still cross examining him. So the indication is that Thursday, mm -hmm. they will do the last but one. Mm -hmm. Then the following Tuesday. So will be the uh, Thursday will be 27, Tuesday will be 2nd July. Mm -hmm. so on 2nd July, we are expecting prosecution to conclude their cross examination of mm -hmm. Mr. Jakba, after which he will also start to call his witnesses. Who will call his witnesses? Mr. Jakba. Ah. Yeah, he said he has witnesses to call. So okay. he will call his witnesses. So if his witnesses are done, then the case is. It's closed. When is the legal vacation? 31st July is the last day. I see. Yes. That's when the vacation starts? Yes. And it's for how long? Two, two months. 
So the whole so of first, August, September August, off. Yes, first September, August, mm -hmm. September is a legal vacation. Okay. Then October, mm -hmm. the new legal year begins. begins. Yes. So I that see. is what. So the court in its earlier sitting is hoping that if for anything at all, mm -hmm. the court should be done with uh, taking witness uh, evidence. So if Mr. Jakwa is done by the end of July, we should be done with his witnesses if possible. Mm -hmm. So that when the court goes into the vacation, its mind will be on writing the judgment. judgment and then the parties will be given so, opportunities. So the closing arguments will be done? Yes. So before the break? Absolutely. So no, if we are done with, with, with taking off uh, witnesses, mm -hmm. evidence, mm -hmm. the court will give the parties timeline to file their written submission, their addresses. Yes. And that one will be time bound. So far within this period, even mm -hmm. it could be in the court of the legal vacation, mm -hmm. then uh, the court will fix a date within which the new legal year to deliver a judgment. So that's how it works. So if we are done, if the court is done with taking evidence, mm -hmm. then nothing should stop the court. So when you go to through the throughout the legal vacation, the court man will be only on preparing the judgment. The, the judgment. Yes. So that's what Justice Ifia Sawasa Buji has is hoping to do. Yes. So this week we have a short break until Thursday for the ambulance case too. For but the ambulance yes. case. But many other cases are still absolutely are still so running. Yeah. Except those mm -hmm. that are affected by the, 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 the absence of the jury, but we'll still find out. Is Let me spare you all, five minutes. Remind us what happened last Thursday with the case. Yes, so <laughs> very interesting uh, 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 cross-examination there. Mm -hmm. So at the last court sitting, Mr. Japa, or, uh, as it were, um, brought to the attention of, of, you know, the issue of the uh, Attorney General's WhatsApp uh, version of the WhatsApp conversation mm -hmm. between him and Uche Japa. Mm -hmm. It was brought in. The lawyers raised a preliminary legal objection. Lawyers of Mr. Japa. They said that, look, they had compared with it and they realized that, no, some messages which were not on Mr. Japa's phone were on Attorney General's uh, 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 WhatsApp chat that he brought to the court. Mm -hmm. And the prayer, the simple prayer is that the court should call for, the, for both the Attorney General and Mr. Japa to bring their phones mm -hmm. so that they will compare the messages on them. The AGs uh, replied and said that, look, Mr. Japa came here and told the court that he brought the re most relevant part of the messages to court to come and tell his story. Mm -hmm. And we have brought what we think is all conversation between them. So what are you talking about? His was adopted. Why should, he, why should ours not be accepted? So he asked the court to, uh, as it were, reject that particular objection. And rightly so, just the Fiasa was admitted the attorney general's version into evidence in chief. Then cross examination continues. The issue about whether uh, mm -hmm. who uh, started negotiation came in. The issue about Japa said that he doesn't really remember if he sent uh, city um, eight messages to the attorney general. Mm -hmm. And one of the propositions that he also attached to that was the effect that the prosecution who the view that the sixty eight messages that he sent was in a mean to harass the attorney general because the attorney general had declined his request to drop charges against him and even make him uh, a, 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 a prosecution witness. He said no. Some of the messages I sent to the attorney general, he didn't reply because we were together. We were sitting together and having a conversation. So for instance, Francis, you and I are having a conversation. I said, okay, there is this document, send it to me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sitting here and you send the document to me, all that, goes, okay, I have received it. There's no need for me to reply it through your WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. That's one of the analogies that uh, Richard Jaffa has been saying. So yes, the AG asking for those me me uh, messages or those requests and all that. So mm -hmm. if he's sent and the AG doesn't reply, the answer is that it could be that they were in close proximity and so there's no need for you. It doesn't make sense for you to even reply when I'm just here. You can, okay, received. Mm -hmm. That is his answer to the, to, the, to the whole thing. And the Attorney General also holds the view that no. He said, when the Attorney General also promised him that, look, at the submission of no case, you are going to be decided because we are only using you as a collateral mm -hmm. to get a, to get at the force. And when we take you out of the case at this particular point in time, uh, at the force and his lawyers will notice uh, that something is happening. So that one, let's not go. We'll go through the submission of no case and you'll be uh, uh, discharged. Mm -hmm. And he said, the night, he had that discussion in the night around 1 a.m. thereabout. And the following morning, they came to court, and the court has ordered him to open his defense. And said, look, since that day, they realized that, no, Attorney General has betrayed him, and that made him declare a war. And he said that 
as somebody who is not a he described that when uh, using some uh, vulgar language and words and all that mm -hmm. to and at the point in time he was being cautioned to be careful because at one point in time he is not in a position to make that particular uh, call and order so in effect he went on to say a whole lot of things he went on to also say that at a point in time he said now i don't trust the judge if you are saying i don't want this case to travel beyond submission of no case because if this case should go to the end of the trial i don't know i don't want to be in someone and be tracking spending money on appeal so he told the attorney general that was the day he declared a war on the attorney general that whatever he will do attorney general can use the law at his disposal to do whatever he wants but he he used the word underwear he will use his underwear to strength uh, the powers that he have as a street boy to also fight for his life so uh, uh, these are some of the things that Mr. Japa has been telling the court at the last court sitting, which uh, prosecution uh, indicate or think that for them, the cross-examination that they, they, they subjected Mr. Japa to, it's something that they have done. And they were doing it to make their case or to discredit him based on the uh, allegations that they have. And that the Attorney General himself was present in courts, and in fact, he was pushing all the questions to the Director of Public Prosecution mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. So. At one point in time, something interesting happened when he was handed the WhatsApp chat of the Attorney General. Then uh, the DPP asked him to read. Then he started reading. At one point in time, there was a greeting. And that greeting, you know, he started with, hi, bro. Mm -hmm. Then he said, hi, brother. Then he said, the DPP said, read what is there. It is bro. It is not brother. <laughs> so he went on to say, the next line of message was deleted. Then the attorney general who deleted it, then it became another issue. So the the lawyers prompted the judge. The attorney general is harassing the the, the the witness, and then the court admonished the attorney general that is the leader at the bar, mm -hmm. even though there may be some senior lawyers who, people who might be called to the bar before him. Mm -hmm. But at this particular point in time, he's as the, the, the leader of the bar, so he has to uh, conduct himself in such a way that he would put the trial in in the situation whereby the court at that day. The court had difficulty in as it were controlling uh, Richard Jaffa, especially so when they are uh, recording virtually everything that was said. Mm -hmm. One question, and then he wants to give you a whole background about all the times. and So that is even the reason the cross examination is even extending beyond two sittings. So those are some of the things that came up in the last court sitting with uh, when the Attorney General's Department. In fact, that day, all the squad. The Attorney General, mm -hmm. the two deputies, Dina Sunaba Dapa, mm -hmm. uh, Alfred Chiaiboa, they were present. Director of Public Prosecution, Obobisa was present. Uh, Richard JMBB was present. Mm -hmm. And some of the, the, the state attorneys that they come as a team. But they say that this week uh, they will not be available tomorrow. So on Thursday, they will be, be back in so who, do, so who did the cross examination? M Mrs. Uh, Atakura Obobisa. Okay. Yes. She the she DPP. Been, yeah, the DPP. She has been. So at this particular point in time, the Attorney General is only uh, at the background and then laying out the questions, uh, okay, because he is said to have directly had the conversation with Mr. Richard Jaffado. Some of the things, it will be clear that you have to feed the DPP with the information. Mm -hmm. so that And the DPP, those who know her, is a very strong woman, mm -hmm. very strong woman. She's very quiet, very calm, but when she's on her feet, you a know. different, a different animal altogether. <laughs> 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 so we, we, we expect a further course examination on the 27th of June to, mm -hmm. to, to, to as it were, uh, come up. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, the man Mutala Inusa, the our man legal affairs. Francis Abba. Kofi Kenate says that. We chino bien ni hon. Sao hon. Ay. Eh. We chino bien ni hon. Sao hon. 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 We chino bien ni hon. What's going on? We'll get talking after the break. Stay with us. The regular football season is.